Hello everyone, this is Tally Sim McKnight, and uh, welcome to my Thoth Tarot course. Um, this video I originally planned to be just for Patreon only, but I figured that this is really important and I should just put it out there for everyone. Um, so today I'll be talking all about the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. This is a type of universal symbol or glyph. It represents all the different aspects of creation. It shows the process of creation. It is a symbolic map. It is a symbolic representation of the universe and of our own psyche. So it is a symbolic map of the universe and our own psyche. And it isn't just the physical world. As a matter of fact, you see this little circle here at the bottom? This sephira is called Malkuth, and this Malkuth is the physical world. All this, this higher parts of the tree is seen as layers above the physical, okay? But Malkuth is the reception of all the spiritual, higher, more subtle forces, okay? So the tree of life shows the process of man, of, of spirit coming into materialization to congeal to solidify and become solidified okay and then also the tree of life since it shows all the subtler aspects so like i said this bottom sephira malkut this represents the physical dimension and all that is above this represents higher spiritual layers of reality so the tree of life shows that journeying up the tree, we can come to experience higher aspects of our being. We can come to know more subtle aspects of the world and of ourselves. The tree of life represents all aspects of the psyche and all aspects of the universe. The tree of life is composed of 10 spheres called sephirot. Now the alt is plural at the end. Sephira is singular, Sephira. Sephirot, the O-T, the alt at the end, is the feminine plural, okay? So Sephira is singular, Sephirot is plural in Hebrew. So these ten Sephirot represent aspects of consciousness, they represent uh, different qualities or attributes of the divine and different forces within our psyche, different aspects of nature. They represent all of these things. This represents man and God. Okay, to use that. Uh, and of course, woman and goddess. It's not gender specific, but in fact, duality is found throughout the tree. Actually, you have two pillars. What you're going to learn with the Tree of Life is how to think symbolically. Now, this tree, those of you, many of you have seen this a million times and are very familiar and well-versed. Those of you that are seeing this for the first time, this tree is now being planted in the mind. And it grows. Because as you gain more information, as you gain, this is also a mnemonic device. Um, as you gain more information, everything in existence, anything you could fathom, could be assigned to one of the 22 paths or 10 sephirot of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Israel Regardi, um, in a book that I highly recommend called A Garden of Pomegranates, he refers to these as 32 filing cabinets. Basically, you can put file anything, anything you can come up with. It could be book <laughs> or pencil or car, or cat, or dog, anything, light, dark, moon, sun, uh, anything you could think of, colors, numbers, anything could be assigned to one of the 10 spheres or 22 paths, okay? Sometimes collectively referred to as the 32 paths of wisdom, as it says in the Sefer Yetzira. Now, why would we want to do this? There's so many reasons. Where do I even begin? Why? <laughs> For one thing, we are building a symbol system. 
Why are we doing that? So many reasons. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Through a symbol system, we are able to perhaps communicate with deeper aspects of ourselves or even come to higher realizations, obtain higher forms of, of thinking to kind of think outside the box, <laughs> quite literally, to kind of come out of ourselves through the contemplation of symbols. Okay, this is often seen as a type of ladder to the divine. We are ascending the ladder of lights. As we go up the tree, we are entering into the path of return. Now, I'm going to try to break this down. Uh, so, let's take a look at this, y'all. First of all, uh, Keter is the source of all things. Keter. It means crown. And many of you that are familiar with the Hindu systems or yogic systems would associate crown with um, the Sahasrara chakra. Okay, chakra, the crown chakra represents divine unity. And a crown obviously is above the head. Okay, the crown of the head. And uh, here you have wisdom, chokmah, and bina, understanding. Okay, wisdom and understanding in the crown. Now, these represent the Godhead. All of the real, <laughs> really, as you'll see, since all comes from emanationism, all things are aspects of the Godhead. And this is another thing to understand. In, in the Kabbalistic schema, it's impossible to be separated from God because ultimately all things are an unfoldment of God. The universe itself is merely an unfoldment of God. <laughs> it is an expansion and expression of the divine essence. All things um, are returned to the Kabbalistic monad and beyond that, the uh, Kabbalistic zero. In other words, all things come from the same source, okay? Now, back up here, this triad the Kabbalistic Tree of Life is composed of various triads, okay? This is often called um, the ethical triad. This is called the triad of nature, okay? Up here you have the supernal triad. You have various triads. You have various pillars, okay? Th this is called the pillar of... This is called the pillar of force, and this is called the pillar of form. So you have force or energy and form, Entered the uh, and then this is the middle pillar, okay. And really, the middle pillar is the path of return. Notice that the middle pillar, if you add up, if you put numbers here, the Kabbalah is all about symbols and numbers and letters and colors. So, if you put numbers in the Sephirot in order one, two, a three here, a four, a five, a six, a seven, eight, nine, ten. And you only add up the middle column. That's 1, 6, 9, and 10. If you 10 plus 9 is 19, plus 6 is 25, plus 1 is 26. Now, in Hebrew, uh, letters are also numbers. Like, there's no separate way to write numbers in Hebrew. Just like Roman numerals, like III I, I is the number 3, or V is 5. In the same way, Hebrew letters... The letters are, are how you write numbers also. So instead of writing a one in Hebrew, you just use the letter Aleph. Bait is two. Gimel is three. Dalet is four. Okay. He is five. So the Hebrew letters, if you add up the, the, the letters in Yod He Vav He that spell Yahweh or Jehovah, basically if you write the divine name of God and you add up the letters, it equals 26. So does the middle column, the middle path is the way of mysticism, the path of great return. And these two pillars represent polarity, duality, okay? So duality and polarity. So you have the pillar of force, the pillar of form, and then the pillar of balance. You have these various triads. You could uh, assign um, astrological symbols to these. Malkut is earth. Yesod represents the moon. Hold is Mercury, Netzach is Venus, Tiferet is the Sun, 
Chesed, or Geber, I mean, is Mars. Chesed is, uh, is Jupiter. Then you have this interesting thing called the Abyss. That's a whole thing to go into. And then Saturn, Zodiac, the Prima Mobile, the first movement. And then you have, the again, the letter Aleph. Okay, that looks like a, the, the beginning of the whirlings. Looks a lot like a spiraling universe. All comes from the monad, and ultimately beyond it, the three veils of negative existence, which are Ain, Ain Sulf, and Ain Sulf Or. Essentially, if we see duality throughout nature, through everywhere we look, we see expansion and contraction. We see male and female. We see duality, okay? We see duality throughout life. We see growth and then we see decay, okay? Throughout the world, we see even polarities of electricity and things like that. We see polarity. And the Kabbalistic thinking, the source must be above polarity, because both come out of it, it itself must be above polarity. It is the one, or beyond that, the not. Which refers more to the lack of things. All things come from it. Although there are no colors, although it has no color, although it is colorless, all colors spring from it. Although it has no sound, all sounds come from it. It is beyond frequency, and let all frequencies come from it. So, although colorless, uh, all the colors come from it. All things come from the same source. So, now we're going to do something here, and we're going to look at this from a little bit of a different angle. Okay? Um, actually, no. Let's go back to this for a second. <laughs> we're doing it live! We're doing it live, y'all. Doing it live. Okay. I'm being silly. So, Keter is the source. Chokmah is often referred to as the father. It is a rush of energy. Okay. And in the four-lettered name of God, yod heh vav heh it is the letter Yod. And if you look at the letter Yod, it is the point and it is the seed. And, and it is said Kabbalistically and symbolically that all of the letters are just different manifestation, different combinations of the letter Yod. And if you look at the letter Yod with the head and the tail, it kind of looks to a certain extent like a sperm. Uh, a sperm. It represents the Father. It is energy. It is a rush of energy. It is the Word, the Logos, okay, the Divine Word. This could also be seen as Mercury in the highest form. Mercury no longer is merely the, the messenger of the gods, but Mercury is the divine logos, the word that express the mind of the father or father mother <laughs> or that which is beyond the origin, better said. So from the one comes a rush of energy. The one is not a rush of energy because that's, that's, that's something <laughs> about nothing. How do I put it? The one cannot say, if it ha if it's a rush of energy, then it's active. Then it's, okay. This is the source. Chokmah is a rush of energy. It is infinite, just giving. This could be seen also as the Big Bang. From a primal point comes an explosion of energy and light. This is the speaking of the word, which is creative. Bina is the great mother. This is the father. This is the great mother aspect of the divine. The great mother. This is receptive. If this is the speaking of the word, this is the receiving or listening to the word. If this is a rush of energy, this is receiving that energy and giving it form. This is often represented as the great womb, the great mother, okay? So, father and mother. So, the tree of life shows the divine no longer as just some father figure. The divine, by the way, we are all part of this greater, higher reality. You and I are like atoms <laughs> to the greater. This this is beyond really anything that we could even put into normal words, which is why we use symbols. Through meditating on the tree of life, our minds are able to 
perhaps go beyond themselves or their everyday limits to try to understand some concepts that are a little bit outside the box of our everyday normal conditioning and church and school programming, okay, <laughs> and government propaganda and all of that. But out of the one, there's the, the masculine aspect of the divine and the divine feminine. This is the speaking of the word, and this is the hearing of the word, or the, the, the receiving of that energy. Or you could say, now this is so, this is at a much higher level than f the physical world, but by analogy, it could be said to be similar to the sexual act, the release of energy, and then taking that energy, receiving it, and then giving it a form. And these are often referred to as the divine father and mother, the speaking of the word and the hearing of the word, the reception. It is a, a, an active and then a receptive. Okay. And these both come from the one. Okay. And these are equal. These, this is the beginning of a polarity coming from the primal unity. Now, this is above the abyss. Above the abyss, duality is unity. It's really something that's hard for minds to comprehend. If our minds could really comprehend it, then, well, we would have crossed the abyss. <laughs> so, basically, um, yeah, crossing the abyss. Okay. Um, hold on just a second here. Okay, so anyways, um, we have, we, these are co-equal. And they are both, one is a projective and one is receptive, okay? Now, this could also be applied, we can try to use an analogy. This could be seen as like a spark of an idea. And this could be to develop that idea and plan it out, map it out into a form. This form is said Kabbalistically to represent the next six sephirot, which are Chesed, Gebra, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. These six sephirot are collectively referred to as the son, S-O-N, the son of the father and the mother. Now, this is all symbolic. It's not to be taken literally, but it's, it's, it, it's to get our minds to begin working on the symbols. Already these symbols are working upon you. If this is your first time. Now, or, or even not. Okay. So the father and the mother, Yod He, give the Vav. And this is the form, but it's all potential. This is like the fetus in the womb of the great mother, okay? It's all potential. Finally comes the daughter or the, the, this is final manifestation. And this is really a reflection of Keter. Keter is in Malkut, Malkut is in Keter. This is the final result, the, the physical universe is the 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 form which came from giving structure to the original energy of the original point now within the constitution of human beings also in the tree of life we have a map here the the physical world the the material aspect of our being okay well, let's not say the goof. Let's say the nefesh. The nefesh is that aspect of ourselves that is more closely tied to the material. It is our vital life force energy. And also the nefesh could be placed here. But for this purpose, we're going to put nefesh here at Malkut. Okay, this is the vital life force of the body. Beyond that, we have the ruach. The ruach is... The, the different spheres or different aspects of the personality and the psyche, uh, which all surrounds and encompass the solar center, which is our self-conscious awareness or even our spiritual center, the core of our being or, or of our star. Now, 
beyond this, we have the neshama, which can be divided up into uh, chia and yechida and all of this, okay? And of course, remember that yehud has the gematria of 13, and uh, 13, <laughs> unity, yehud, manifested in duality, um, gives us yod he vav he, <laughs> which is the formula of the whole tree, okay? Now, and of the father, mother, son, daughter. Uh, now, and in the tarot, these are represented by the king, queen, knight, and page. Or in the Thoth tarot, the knight, queen, prince, and princess. And also, by the way, in the tarot, uh, the number, all aces go here to Keter. All twos of all four suits, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. So the, the minor arcana, meaning the numbers, the, the, the cards one through ten of, uh, the four suits are basically the ten sephirot in the four Kabbalistic worlds and the four elements. So, uh, in the tarot cards, Numbers one through ten of wands is the, the, the ten sephirot in, in the element of fire. Cups of water, swords of air, and discs of earth. So, um, as you see, the minor arcana are assigned to the ten sephirot on the Kabbalistic tree of life, and the four court cards of each suit correspond to the father, uh, mother, son, daughter of Tetragrammaton. And then the 22 major arcana, or trump cards, represent the 22 paths. Now, the 22 paths are relationships and places of transition between the Sephirot. While the Sephirot represent more concrete aspects of consciousness and of nature, the 22 paths represent transition. They represent Movement from point A to point B. How do you get from Malkut to, uh, how do you get from Malkut to hold? You go through the path of Sheen. Now, the 22 major arcana are very much initiatic, and they are the way in which we, uh, ascend, uh, are ascend to the spiritual source of being, and they also show a way that we are able to conceptualize the world. And that is also, by the way, why the 22 major arcana are not just uh, objective representations of the universe. No, there's also a little bit of propaganda there as it's intended to. They are the lessons that we are to meditate upon, um, that, that humanity needs to contemplate these lessons. There are very specific lessons involved in the 22 major arcana, and they show us how we can make these evolutionary leaps and how we can explore these different aspects of our being. Now, Something very cool is that these also represent quite literal higher dimensions or spiritual planes that we can explore. Now, some may see them as external actual places. Some may see them as inner traveling, exploring more subtle aspects of our consciousness. Some see them as actual Whatever the case may be, whether internal or external, subjective or objective, whatever the case may be, out-of-body experiences, astral projection, soul travel, out-of-body astral projection, astral travel, so many different terms, which really there's technical differences <laughs> between some of those, but not to go into here. One could travel through the past, so tarot cards could be used as doorways or windows to be able to explore higher levels, more subtle aspects of creation and of ourselves. As you can see, the, the tarot, the major arcana, okay, these cards are much more than just divinatory devices. This is a language system. And these cards can be used to 
explore higher dimensions, higher levels of reality. Look at this. Look at this image. That's the star card. Okay, and it depicts the goddess Nuit, who represents infinite possibilities and infinite space, the queen of space. Uh, and she is... Uh, the, the renewing of the categories, okay? All as all potentials of existence, okay? She's, she's pouring the, the, the water upon her own head. This is like <laughs> deeply symbolic and, uh, think of these, these aren't just divinatory devices. Whether they originated as such, they may have just began as a game. So there are different opinions on the history and origin of tarot. But the history and the origin of tarot really sh is not the point. Tarot, as Crowley said, should stand on its own merits as a system, not its great antiquity. Whatever the K the origin of tarot, whether intentional originally or not, tarot has become, uh, think of them as sacred paintings, sacred images, sacred paintings that, that, uh, are initiatic okay these are initiatic check this out this is um the hierophant okay you have the hierophant card look at this go meditate on these images see what comes to mind you might find that as you look at this card certain things come to the surface of your mind this is a book not of letters and words so much as a, a book of pictures these are things to be explored, okay? You're learning to communicate with your own subconscious, learning to communicate with more subtle realms of being, okay? And, uh, yeah, all aspects, all aspects of being. This is definitely <laughs> transformative. Um, this makes me think of the layman of VVVVV. Y'all, we're going to be going deeper into these themes, and uh, I'm just really excited. <laughs> we're going to be going into everything. For example, what's that mean? That's the Hermetic Rose Cross. What's that about? You're going to be learning the language of symbols. As I said, I originally planned to make this video for Patreon only. So just so you know, this is the kind of videos that's going to be just for Patreon. Uh, but after a year, I'll put it all public, um, but this is an example of my Patreon videos that I'll be putting out, because this was originally going to be a Patreon video, but here we are. Um, so, as I said, there's so many ways that you can look at the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, okay? This is much more than just a symbol, you could, you could represent anything in nature, anything within yourself, any emotion, any thought, any idea, any object can be placed somewhere on this tree. Okay? So that the mind can learn to kind of transcend itself to a certain degree. I'm going to show in my course how we can use the cards for astral projection, how we can use them as tools for self-transformation. As an example... Let's look at the tree just from Tiferet down. Let's take a look at this, actually. I think that this would be very helpful, okay? So, this is all, this may not sound like it. <laughs> it may sound complex to some people, but this is all very basic, really. And this is just the basic um, building blocks of understanding all of this stuff. And... Um, I really recommend if people are just learning about the Kabbalah uh, to read as much as possible. Three books that I highly recommend for the Hermetic Kabbalah, which we cover here, um, of course, and this is just for people just learning this, beginners. Um, the Chicken Kabbalah by um, Lon Milo Duquette, uh, and two books by Israel Regardi, His Tree of Life and uh, Garden of Pomegranates. Okay, so these are two very good books. Now, um, and here, 
And of course, uh, seven, seven, you know, things for the course, 777 and other Kabbalistic writings by Aleister Crowley. Crowley is a little bit, <laughs> maybe not so beginner friendly, um, but required reading. This course is not going to be beginner friendly, really. Um, this is the deck you're going to need. Uh, Book of Thoth, um, 777, Ka other Kabbalistic writings of Aleister Crowley. And uh, we're going to we're going to work through this. Um, all right. So here we go. We're going to look at the, we're going to look at it this way. OK, so we're going to look at Tiferet down and we're going to kind of look at this idea of moving up to more subtle aspects of our being. OK, now I'm well, let's just look at the bottom of the tree. Okay, and we'll look at this idea of astral traveling, spirit journeying, whatever you want to call it. I don't really like those terms, but, um, okay, so here we go. All right, now, and then I'm going to do this. Okay. All right, so this is what we have here. All right, y'all. So I cut off the top of the tree. We're just looking at Tiferet down. This is the bottom part of the tree. There's a higher part of the tree. As you can see, the pass reaching up. Um, so this 10 is Malkut. Already, again, the tree is being planted in the brain and in the consciousness in general in the mind it's already being planted in your mind because you're already associating numbers you're associating astrological data you're you're associating a lot believe it or not there's a lot going on in the subconscious that we're not consciously aware of our subconscious is ruminating on this as we speak okay now 10 malkut represents physical reality so drill that in the head. Physical reality is number 10 here. Nine. Uh, this represents the astral plane, but really depending on how you define that, the whole, <laughs> the whole, these six sephirot could be considered astral. So it depends on how you look at it. Nine is often referred to as the astral plane, the aspect of reality right above the physical. More subtle than the physical realm, this is the astral plane. Also, it represents the realm of dreams, dreams and imagination. And there may be a correlation here. It may be that the astral plane externally is also a realm of thought of potentials and, and basically while while, and again, the path of Tao is about Saturn, about limitation, restriction, Saturn. But things are not so restricted in Yesod. In this, in this realm, you may discover it is a realm of potentials. <laughs> things that here may seem impossible, they're not impossible. The rules bend. They've got their own laws. It's a little different here, though. This is also the subconscious mind. So here we have the physical, here we have the subconscious and the memory. Eight, hold. This is our logic and our ideas and thoughts. Seven, netzach. Uh, a lot of people pronounce it netzach. Netzach. The letter chet never makes a K sound. It does not. However, I think it's important to not be like overly like, worried about pronunciation but i think it matters a little bit at least a little like we ought to try a little bit netzach mm -mm. netzach netzach or just make an h sound netzach i think we should try at least to pr approximate the sounds i don't think we should give up yet you know but netzach this is the desires and the passions so we have our intellect and ideas, logic and reasoning, and we have our passions. Here we have our subconscious, and then here we have the physical. Now, uh, this is, <laughs> these could be seen to represent our vehicles, okay? What in theosophy we would refer to as the physical, emotional, mental, 
or different ways of looking at this. We have the physical, the subconscious, the realm of ideas and, and intellect and, and analysis, the realm of art and, and desire. And of course, all of these things exist within the, the, the unconscious as well. We also have unconscious thinking and desires. And so we have these paths, okay? Now, all of these, none of these are our spiritual core. Our spiritual core center is represent, or, or our center of consciousness, self-consciousness is represented by Tiferet. This is our solar consciousness. This is our spirit, so to speak, above our, our vehicle, okay, our outer vehicle. Now, our, our center of consciousness, when we're focused on external events, is, is looking, metaphorically speaking, looking downward through the lens of our ideas and, uh, and passions and emotions, through the lens of our memory and the physical senses where we interact with the physical world, okay? But if we turn inward, we come to our spiritual center and the things that are above, but our spiritual center itself or the holy guardian angel or, or the, the kind of our, our individuality, the center of our ruach as well is also a reflection of the divine source. Now, this path that connects the highest aspect of the father, father, which meaning beyond gender or sex, father as in just the source, the source, the, the highest aspect of the father and the son connected by the priestess. This represents our, our, our solar consciousness, our, our center of our consciousness, its source in the divine source. Okay. Now in astral projection, for example, we can journey through these paths, okay? Through the path of Tao, uh, we may come into, uh, through the path of Tao, we'll eventually get to this lunar sphere. And those of you that work with like ceremonial magic, uh, like grimoires and stuff, uh, through astral projection, you could interact with lunar spirits in their own realm. Instead of calling them to you, you can go to them. Through the path of Sheen, which represents fire and transformation, a realm of fire and transformation, we get to the, the realm of hold, intellect and analysis and, and all of this. And then through the path of Kulf, represented by the moon card, this is a lot of shadow work, okay? We, we deal with a lot of things that are the, un, the unseen, okay? Those unseen aspects of ourselves. It's just really, it's just something you have to experience. This is not so much about uh, logical learning. It is that too. But in order to have an experience, you meant, you logic, you rationally learn all these attributes and memorize them, memory, um, so that you can begin to speak this language. Okay, the symbol system, um, so that you can have kind of experience these higher levels. This is like a ladder. We're, we're simultaneously building the ladder as we climb it. <laughs> we build the next level and climb it. Okay. We're building a ladder to heaven. Okay. And we're climbing it as we build it within ourselves through the associations. Okay. So we're going to go deeper and deeper, but these three letters, the path of Kulf, the path of Sheen, the path of Tav, these spell Keshet. And Keshet is the Hebrew word for bow, which means Sagittarius. And Sagittarius uh, connects Yesod to, to uh, Tiferet. Okay? Now, also, let's say our everyday consciousness out there in the world, running errands, going to work, whatever you're doing, out there in the world... When we're focused on our senses and out there in the world, our consciousness is in Malkut. Now, sometimes we catch glimpses of our holy guardian angel or our, our, the center of our, the, our spiritual center often speaks to us through dreams, through the subconscious. So here's the thing. Sometimes when we get quote unquote visions or, or ex spiritual experiences of our higher solar center, it goes through the uh intermediary of the subconscious. Now the, the subconscious is the realm of dreams and fantasy and also illusion. 
So sometimes we may catch a glimmer of a spiritual reality through through the lens of yes old. We may get like an illusory kind of lens. This is also the realm of illusion, also the realm of dreams and the subconscious. The subconscious may be an intermediary. We go through the subconscious to reach the spiritual source, okay, and through dreams and through analogy, all right? So, and we could also get there through analysis. We could also get there through devotion, okay? There are different paths and different types of yoga. And in the AA system, you work with the different types of yoga because it's it's a combination of the systems of East and West. That's a whole other topic unto itself. Um, all right. Let me see here, because I'm looking here, looking at some comments here. All right. Anyways, the thing is, Angels of Taurus. Okay, let me see. Very cool. Let me see here. Well, I need to get back to this. I'm going to look at the comments also, and I really appreciate it, Kato and everyone. Um. So anyways, moving, we can use the tarot to kind of become conscious of more subtle realities. And I am very confident that those that take the tarot course or, or those, let's say you don't take my tarot course, but you just decide to work through the deck yourself or with guidance, however you want to do it, also in my tarot course, but whether my course or not, I am very confident that working with these cards in the proper way you kind of know using a good method. There are many ways to do it, but there are also better and worse ways. <laughs> okay. Um, done in a one of the proper ways, done in a proper way, I am very confident that people will have direct spiritual experiences of higher realities because it's about that direct experience. It's not just so much about logically understanding metaphysical ideas and that's why this is not so much a system of belief as a system of gaining insight and knowledge and direct seeing we come to experience directly higher realities within ourselves and let us remember that these represent different aspects of our consciousness and different levels of consciousness don't forget that there are different planes here as well okay uh, think of the horizontal, uh, the vertical a lot, uh, placement as different levels, okay? The physical subconscious and the autonomic part of us is, is slightly above just the, the totally just materialistic. There's a little life force there. There's a pumping. There's all these things. And of course, that's material here. But we're using an analogy. We see that our passions and our ideas are in a higher plane. Beyond that is the solar uh, center, spiritual center at the core of our being. And beyond that, it draws from higher sources. Beyond that, the abyss, which separates the divine and the phenomenal worlds. Okay, above the abyss, duality is unity. Duality is harmony. All and but below the abyss, duality is is division. And that's kind of hard for our minds to wrap around. And this is a whole thing with dot and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and kind of going into the whole story um of the the garden and of course Meshiach and Nachash, both equal 358. That's a whole thing to go into. But this is just a basic rundown. Um, it's just very important to me that we're all on the same page. I made a couple attempts to try to explain the Sephiroth. <laughs> so this is like take three or whatever. I've done a lot of videos actually on the Tree of Life. Um, on my YouTube, if you go back through my my videos, there's actually a lot of material that I've done on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. So people that are on my YouTube, uh, if you want to hear more of what I have to say on this, um, and we're going to go a lot deeper too, but if you want to see some of the stuff I've already put, I've made a lot of videos over the years on the Tree of Life. But we're going to go deeper and deeper here, y'all. So this, again, uh, was my attempt. And then also, I wanted to throw this in here. 
Very important. Those of you that are beginning this process, I highly recommend that at minimum, at minimum, you you take your Thoth deck and you focus on what is my lesson for today, spiritual material lesson, shuffle the deck, no reversals. We don't need, we're not even doing reversals here. Just shuffle the deck, pull a card. What is my lesson for today? Okay. Pull pull the card, you know. So uh and then what is the bottom card? I also like to look at the bottom card. You shuffle the deck, you pull the card, you got a bottom card that just adds a little info, okay? So, and then read these two cards together. Now, at first, it's going to be difficult <laughs> for those of you that are new. This is not going to be an easy process, but it's going to be a very rewarding process. And a process that's going to help you to have spiritual growth and to awaken different aspects of your personality to uh, to really kind of become aware of these higher aspects of being. It, obviously, people are doing it because it's very rewarding. And we're going to go deeper and deeper into this topic here. So, and this is often referred to as pathworking. Pathworking is essentially working up the tree. Pathworking, okay? It's an initiatic journey. And for those of you that astral travel... Whether it's within us or object, whatever the case may be, you will encounter beings. <laughs> Things that talk to, you know, if you're astral traveling, whether it's in your mind or external, you will have some very interesting experiences. I am very confident that people going through this, they're going to come out very different if they, they work this in the right way. Different in a good way, more expanded more successful, more whole, more complete, higher exalted, in a more spiritual state. So that's the goal. So, um, like I said, originally this was going to be a Patreon-only video, um, but I, I got to thinking, you know, I really think that uh, this is going to be, I'm going to be doing Patreon videos like this. This was originally going to be Patreon only, but I put it here. Now, I don't have much stuff there, though, yet, but I'm I'm uh, building it up. So, anyway, so that is it for that. And uh, there's going to be more stuff to come. And uh, that's it for now, y'all. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. And I'll see y'all in the next video, y'all. Have a great day, everyone.